Hello everybody, I'm CVM here with Jeff Hoagland and welcome back to our Primal Dawn set review uh, for the new Hex Shards of Fate set uh, that's being released pretty soon. We have the full spoiler now, so we're going through each of the shards uh, and giving you our uh, insight into how we think the card is going to impact both limited and constructed, uh, primarily coming from a Magic the Gathering background, whereas uh, what Jeff and I uh, primarily have played, uh, we are professional content producers uh, and whatnot. So let's go ahead and just jump into the Sapphire Shard. So I feel like Sapphire is just like by far the most powerful color in Hex, similar to Blue being the most powerful in Magic for a very long time. Uh, it was interesting to see as Magic continued to evolve in the last couple of years, I feel like Green has just like taken over that department. You just have like all the awesome creatures, all the awesome uh, card advantage. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how that evolves in Hex as the, the, the sets start to get printed and cards get designed. But as it currently stands, I think that Sapphire is just like head and shoulders above the rest of the shards. Yeah, definitely. And like having Arcane Focus to add consistency to all the Sapphire decks definitely pushes that even further. Here's here, here's a, a thing. So Arcane Focus is just actual sleight of hand is what it is. Yeah, correct. Could you imagine if it was one of the better cantrips that was in Magic? Like, like what if Arcane Focus was Preordain? Oh. Look at the top two, decide where they go, and then draw a card. Yep. I could... <laughs> I mean, I haven't been playing Hex that long, but I already... Like, that card would be insane. To, to be fair, I think Peak is one of the more powerful kind trips compared to both of the games. I agree. Uh, I think that the Peak would be... So, uh, for those of you who are watching that aren't 100% familiar with all the Hex cards, in Magic terms, Peak would be uh, two mana instant. Look at the top X cards of your library and put one in your hand uh, and shuffle the rest back in, uh, where X is equal to the number of islands you control. I think that would be a very good card, too. Yep. It scales as it goes along. Um, although, to, to be 100% fair, uh, I feel like cards like Peak... Um, and Yeah, I feel like cards like Peak are exceptionally good in the Wintermoon decks, but not so in the other decks, just because of how well it scales as you go to the late yeah. game and shuffling the cards back in. Um, and Winter Moon's a whole other subject. I need to make a video about how I think that that champion was a mistake. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, anywho, Azure Fang Hierarch. Yeah. Anyway, Azure Fang Hierarch, three cost, double Sapphire Threshold, Ven and Warlock. A lot of words on this one. Uh, one, two, when it enters play, create two eggs for each Venom you control and put them into each opposing champion's deck. When other Venom enters play under your control, bury the top two cards of each opposing champion's deck. This card is busted and limited, like your 40 card decks, your milling, your milling your opponent each time another Venon comes into play. That by itself would be good, let alone just a one time putting eggs into their deck. Um, this might even have applications in Constructed. Yeah, I mean like, so think you go like Exarch of the Egg on two into this on three, you put eight eggs into their deck on three then, so they have ten eggs in the third turn of the game. That's a lot of eggs. And then there's another it's card ten. in Sapphire that's going to push that archetype even more. So I think that spiders are going to be as oppressive in 4-4-3 limited as they were in 3-3-3 limited, but they might even have some constructive application. I'm going to give this one a thumbs up, and we're going to move to the next card that I was talking about, Azure Fang Decree, 3 cost, put 5 eggs in each opposing champion, and then they get milled for 5. I'd be surprised if this one sees constructive play, but I think your probability of hitting eggs right away uh, against a 40 card deck is probably going to be pretty reasonable for this. Yeah, this card is just going to be insane and limited, and it's a common which is dumb like <laughs> can you, you're going to play against decks in 443 limited that have 4 or 5 of these in their deck Yep. and then they might even have a couple lunacies that they drafted, so like uh, I feel like adding this, so if I remember correctly on one of your streams previously, you lost to a mill deck. Yep. This would fit right into that mill deck. Definitely. I, know, I think this card is going to be busted and limited. Might even, might even see playing constructed. Brood Bounty. Another spider card. One cost. Single sapphire threshold. Create a spiderling egg for each opposing champion and put it into their decks. 
when a spider enters play under your control, if this is in your crypt, put this into your hand. I feel like the fact that it's only putting one spider into their deck really limits the playability of this card, and I don't think it's going to see play in either limited or constructed. Yeah, not, definitely not constructed playable. Yeah, I mean, this is... I feel like this is worse than Incubate, and Incubate is... I think it's unplayable, but some people play it, but I don't think it's playable in limited. Cavern Creeper. One cost, single Sapphire Threshold, just a vanilla 1-2 Venom. The Mighty Squire. The Mighty Squire. Do you think this is playable and constructed? <laughs> constructed All-Star. You heard it here first. I mean, it blocks all their 1-1s. One You're not wrong. <laughs> yeah, this card is... Garbo. All right, so here we have Hands Chill. Up. Yep. Zero cost, quick action, exhaust target card. Single Sapphire Threshold. Uh, Interesting design. Yeah, so anything that you can play for free is worth looking at. I don't think this effect is going to be good enough um, to, to see playing constructed. Like, zero cost, works well with Phoenix, we'll keep harping on that. But I think this is just so low impact that it's not worth a card. Yeah, I agree. I think it's, you know, even w less powerful than Scorch, which makes it not playable. Yeah, well, one thing that I, I do want to point out, uh, the difference between Magic and Hex is that, like, in Magic, your resources are permanents, which are extremely tangible, and there are lots of cards that interact with them. But in Hex, they are not permanents, like, they're not in play, and there are a very limited number of cards that interact with resources. So, like, if this like was able to deny your opponent a resource for the turn similar to like what a card that would tap something down in magic would do then it might yeah, if this was like twiddle like... yeah yeah then it might actually have some application but because it doesn't it just makes it too narrow all right here we have chill tail guide uh which is going to give you a chill so six cost double blue four four flight when it enters play, create a chill for each other troop you control with flight and put them into your hand. So I think this is going to be a limited bomb, uh, just simply as a six cost four four flyer. Uh, and then if you're able to get a couple chills out of it, um, you know, it's just going to be gravy from there. But I don't think this has applications to construct it at all. Yep, am, I, agree. I was going to say, am I wrong? <laughs> No, yeah, there's, and we're gonna get to some other cards like uh, Flash Paw Elder is coming up. That's just so much better. This and constructed. Yeah, uh, here we have a quick action, two costs, single Sapphire. Uh, target troop control gets flight, draw a card. Again, cantrips are always going to be pretty powerful. I feel like this one could have been one cost, uh, and would still be balanced and still probably be unplayable. But but as it is a two cost, I'm never going to play this card. Yep. Sadly. Like, I feel like uh, Zephyr is, Arcane Zephyr is just much better. Like, I would much rather have Spell Shield and minus one cost than draw a card and plus one cost. Yeah, definitely. Like, uh, basically an interrupt versus a king trip. Mm -hmm. And here we have Cry of the Eagle. So four cost, single Sapphire, basic action. Once per turn, when a coiled troop you control deals damage to a champion, if this is in your hand, you may play it for free. And it Prophecy of the next troop in your deck gets plus two, plus two in flight. I think this card is bad, uh, similar to a lot of the Prophecy cards, because you're not getting an immediate benef benefit, and you just don't know when you're going to see... You, you, you don't know when you're going to reap the rewards of this card. Yeah, yeah, definitely, I agree. This is probably not playable in either format. Unfortunately. The design is sweet, like the free spell. Yep. Here we have Cyclone Rider, and I really like this card. Uh, it's a 3 cost, 2 on flight. Prophecy, when enters play, the next action in your deck gets cost minus 2. I don't think that this is going to be good enough to be played in Constructed, but this is a sweet card in Limited. It's a great body, has some evasion, and then it's able to give you an action on the cheap at some point in the game. Yep. Again, lots of flyers. Yeah, and again, like, again, the big thing about the Prophecy cards that you want to consider, because you don't know when you're going to pay off, like, is this card reasonable without the Prophecy text? If you not, then, you know, pass on it. Here we have a unique design. Three costs, double sapphire, two three, flight and power, actions in your hand have cost minus one. So at six, 
this becomes a 4 6 fly, flyer uh, and gives a minus 2 cost to the actions in your hand. Now, cards like this in Magic have generally been quite balanced because the way costs are designed in Magic, you have colorless and colored mana yeah, cards to, 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 to play your cards, and very rarely does a card actually get to be free. But in Hex, that's not the case. The resources are just colorless, and you have to meet the threshold cost to be able to play the cards. So there's going to be situations where you can just empower this, and then Verdict of the Ancient Kings, the removal spell for free, and then just take over the game with the 4-6. Yeah, definitely. I think this card could even see fringe playing constructed. Like, I, I worked on a, a, a Trishard Coyotes deck for a little while, and this doesn't seem completely unreasonable in that. Like, having free time ripples seems great. Yeah, free time ripples. Also, just like, even playing this is like a 2-3 flyer for 3, and then, like, on your next turn, you get to play 4, like, you can play your 4th shard, and then have, you know, access... Double counter regi. Well, you can just have access to up to, like, 8 costs worth of worth of cards, right? Like, if you just play 4 2-cost cards... Oh, geez, yeah, your peaks are insane with this card. Yeah, like, it makes peak be, be one cheaper, like, your arcane focus is free, your... Um, oh, yeah, I'm reassessing. This thing even blocks Vampire Princess profitably in combat. Yeah, like, yeah, like it blocks okay. Vampire Princess. Your Arcane Focus is free. Your Burns are free. Um, you know, it, it, it makes Ragefire cost one. It makes Oracle Song only cost two, which is real sweet. Okay, yeah, this card's probably... This, I'm, <laughs> this card's... This card and then, and then that's not even getting to the point where you're just talking about... All right, I get to empower this now as a six cost four six flyer. So like, yeah, like we're going back and forth in a top deck war in the late game, and I feel this buddy, and then I hit a card that draws a card, and they all are suddenly free, basically. Yeah, I also uh, a card that I've been pretty high on lately is Zodiac Divination. And this is kind of sweet. You can just like curve this into Zodiac Divination for four, um, and then all right, well, I just got a bunch of cards that are all super cheap now. Okay, Flashpaw Elder, 6 cost, double Sapphire Threshold, 5-5 five, five Flight. When it enters play, the next non-quick troop in your deck becomes quick, and this is a, a quick troop. So this is, this card seems pretty sweet, but I feel like it's just like a big, big body that's quick. Like maybe if you had just like a hard counter magic style Sapphire Control deck, this might end up being playable. Um, it's, it's, is there a world where I'm only playing this card? And wind singer in my deck, and then my wind singers are quick. Yeah, maybe. I could that see that. Seem, well, that so, is completely unreasonable. Well, you, you could also just play like this wind singer and root father without the quick gem, and then so yep. like, no matter what you hit, it's just going to be gravy. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. I, I feel like that's the kind of deck that is going to want. Four copies of Suffocate along with their counter magic. Yeah, I mean, just a fully flash deck sounds sounds great. You're not playing Oracle Song, you're playing Inspiration, whatever whatever that card Epiphany. is called. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. I can definitely see that. Also, I think this card is just a snap for pick and limited. Just six 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 casts, five five. It's a it's an instant speed dragon. And he's literally a fox tornado. So I mean, come on. <laughs> the old the old tornado fox yeah it's not the one all right here we have a really sweet card forbidden tome seeker two costs single sapphire threshold one one when you draw a card it gets a permanent plus one plus one and you can shift that ability onto something else i'd, I'd be surprised if this is constructed playable i feel like it is really you think so yeah, like, so there's not a lot of, like, real good early drops for the Sapphire decks outside of Ancestors Chosen and, like, to, oh, actually, I take it back. I think that I'm, if there's a world where a card will make me not want to play this on turn two, then I don't want it in my deck, and I'm literally always going to Tunnel Reese on two outside of playing this. Yep, and um, I just... Like, again, going back to Dice to Doomblade, 
the type of deck that wants to play this doesn't have a lot of a lot of Doomblade targets, which means that your cards that are exposed to removal, you want them to be able to generate value, generally speaking, when they are sticking on the table. And even something like Ancestors Chosen does that by even if the value is going to come up later in your deck. Yeah. It's a sweet design. I also, it's also interesting to see that this is a Chaos Touch Necrotic Mage. Like, there's not very many cards that have like more than just like the two normal troop types. I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up being good, though. I'll put that down. Asterisk. <laughs> yeah. All right, two, cop two cost frenetic doppelganger, single sapphire threshold, troop shapeshifter. At the start of your turn, this transforms into a copy of another random troop in play. It retains this power, and it's an O3. This is kind of interesting. I mean, this isn't awful, so, like, I could see this coming out of the reserves against, like, a, a blood deck in your control deck, where they only have, like powerful threats that you wouldn't mind copying and they're traditionally like boarding down on some removal against your control deck anyways yeah but it also can copy another random troop in play so like you play this on two and then oh it's at the start of your turn okay so like you're not going to be able to get value on something that you play until turn four yeah so, correct. so, so, think, so like I, I got so, yeah 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 I don't think this card's good Yeah, I don't think this card's good at all. <laughs> Normally, clone-type cards have the potential to be very powerful, but I think this one is. A very no, interesting... It's, it's no Phantasmal Image. Yeah, it's an interesting design, but just not going to be good enough. All right, Hatchery Malvoker. Two costs, double Sapphire Threshold, 2-1. When you play an action, create three eggs for each opposing champion and put them into their decks. That's pretty sweet. It's, this this seems like it would be very good and limited. Like it, it's it's amazing to me how like I've I've only been playing a lot of constructed in hex since I started playing and like these spider cards are so much better when their deck is two thirds the size. Yeah, they're very very good. Um, one interesting thing that I'm noticing uh, in this set is there are a lot of like two cost, very good troops that have like you know the double shard threshold. So, like, you saw that there's a design in Magic where you can, like, push the power of the card by making the cost more restrictive on it. So, like, Knight of Meadowgrain is, like, a 2-2, two -two, you know, first strike lifelink for white-white. Um, and here we're seeing the same thing. You know, two costs, Sapphire, Sapphire for a 2-1. When you play an action, you put three eggs into your opponent's deck. That is extremely powerful. I think this is going to be, a, I don't want to say a bomb in Limited, but going to be a very good card in the Spider decks in Limited. And might even be playable in, like, if there if there becomes like just a dedicated spiraling deck and constructed, this card is going to be part of it. Yeah, and you know, at a common, you're going to get access to this card. Limited. Yeah, I can't wait to draft this set. I need to get you. I need to get you drafted. This set is, this game is just insane for limited. It's so fun. All right, four cost, three two, double sapphire threshold, flight. When this enters play, create a replica of target opposing elf and put it into your hand. It gets plus one, plus one. So this is like our, our race hate card? Yeah, so apparently uh, dwarves are racist against elves. The problem is, is like, if you're not playing ruby or wild, which are the primary shards for the elves, you're just not going to be able to play whatever it is you're making a replica of. Oh, yeah. Unless when you make a replica, it becomes an artifact. I'm not sure how what the difference between copy and replica is in Hex, because I'm a noob. Yeah, there's... They just... And, and in fact, the patch notes talked about some specific differences between the two, and I'm blanking on what they are offhand. Well, nonetheless, I will literally play this card in every single one of my limited decks as a 4-cost 3-2 flyer. Like, this is just Snapping Drake. I'm going to play Snapping Drake every time. Yep. All right, Lamprax Lurker. This art is real creepy. And it's a troop. It's a Lamprax. So if you ever wondered what a Lamprax was, there you go. Uh, yep. So it's a four cost, two, one, double sapphire threshold. What? When you play an action, target troop gets minus two attack this turn. 
I'm not going to play this in Constructed, and I'm probably not even going to play this in Limited. I mean, its face is terrifying, at least. Are you sure that's its face? I'm hoping it's a face. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. Yeah, definitely, definitely not playable in Constructed, and probably not playable in Limited either. Yeah. I I'm just going to follow the flavor text. Vile, immoral parasites avoid at all costs. Don't worry, Mr. Dunthrope. I'm going to avoid these at all costs. Avoid at all costs. The flavor text even helps you when you open the pack. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I let a pause site. Three costs. Single Sapphire Threshold. Basic action. Prophecy, but it does a lot. The next action, resource, and troop in your deck gets when you play this draw card. So it's essentially going to be a draw three for three over X amount of turns where X is unknown. And the nice thing about this card is, um, you know, we've been talking about you don't know when your payoff on the prophecy is coming. This is like, um, and it's, it's Lanupa's site, so like the Lanupa prophecy card is a card I've played in the Kyolos deck. You're guaranteed drawing a prophecy card on your next turn, basically. Well, it doesn't hit artifacts or constants. There's oh. a very high probability that you're getting paid <laughs> off. And, and if your deck's built properly, you know, like in, in deck building decisions, you could, you know, be guaranteed to get paid off the following turn. Yeah, do you think that this might even be playable in a Winter Moon deck? Um, possibly. The fact that it adds the text to all of these cards makes it better in Winter Moon than it would be in other decks. Like maybe, maybe this is an upgrade to Oracle Song because you know, speaking from experience, there's a number of times where like you're on the draw and just don't want to cast your Oracle Song on three because then you because have you to discard anything on the first two turns. Yeah, exactly. Like you don't want to cast this as draw two, discard one. But, like, in the later game, this will help you gas back up when you're down cards. Um, this card's also a variation of Withering Touches because they're, like, draws in the bank as opposed to, like, cards in your hand right away. Yeah, I like that. Uh, I definitely can see myself playing this in Limited. I feel like it's going to be just, su like, a very subtle, extremely powerful card in Limited. All right, Mad Robomancer. Sweet name. Let's see if the card's good. Uh, five cost, single sapphire threshold, 3-3. Three, three. Socketable major, socketable minor. When you play an action, recreate a replica of this and put it into your hand. I don't think I am ever really want to play this in Constructed, but this seems pretty gas and limited. Yeah, I mean, like, just a bunch of 3-3s three, that can... I mean, this could just be a 3-3 three, three flyer, right? Well, it could be a 4-4 four, four flyer if you're a wild sapphire. Wild. Yeah. Yep. Like, that's sweet. It could be... Or, like, it's if you're in blood, it's a 3-3 three, three removal spell, right? Yeah, 3-3 three, three, three flying removal spell. <laughs> yeah, I like that this card in copies, limited. It copies itself. Yeah, I don't think this is going to be good enough for constructed, but it seems gas and limited. All right, Mackerel Mitts. <laughs> the art and name for this card is sweet. <laughs> so there are bunnies that have fish on their hands. They're literally wearing the fish. Mackerel Mitts, uh, so three cost, single sapphire, quick action, and power, attacking troops, troops get minus one attack. And that's permanent. This, this card could be what, you know, the sapphire control decks that don't have access to Heat Wave and need to keep up with the Ruby aggressive decks. Yeah, this, this, I think this card has a lot of potential. Like, this combined with, you know, the fight dinos is a, is a decent bridge. Yeah. Man. And... They got fish hands. Yep. All right, Mesmeric Chant. One cost. Chant, single sapphire threshold. When a constant enters play under your control, exhaust a random opposing troop. That troop can't ready during its controller's next ready step. And it's a common. So if there's a limited chant deck, this is going to be a part of it. And it's just another one cost chant. So like you might even be able to play this, like we were talking about, like a ruby, ruby blood chant deck with that, that new champion maybe you just go ruby sapphire so you get more one cost chance to go along with your uh the two damage one yeah and this is pseudo removal at least for a turn or so yeah this card i think this card's sweet all right midnight hour five cost quick action put target troop in its controller's hand it gets cost plus one for each different threshold you have it's a quick huh. action. This probably isn't constructed playable. Like, I feel like it's not going to be that much better than Time Ripple most of the time, and it costs 2.5 times as much. Yeah, I think that this is just much worse than Time Ripple. I don't even think this is going to be playable and limited. 
Like it's just a five cost bounce. I kind of wish that this was just like a five cost one one that had the same exact effect. Yep. Then it would be limited playable. Just a, another crappy uncommon to open. Thanks. Moonsong Oracle. Five cost, triple sapphire threshold, troop coil to warlock flight. When it enters play, each card in your hand transforms into an Oracle Song, and it's a 4-5. This, this card seems great and limited, right? If it's castable, you, you probably just want to draw a bunch of cards. Yeah, I mean, I guess you can just play it and get a bunch of Oracle Songs. I guess it just depends on how many cards in your hand are just better than Oracle Song. <laughs> That's true. Now, to be fair, um, I only started playing in set 3, which Oracle Song is in set 2, I believe. So I haven't had a chance to play Oracle Song Unlimited to see how good it is in Limited. I don't think this is going to be good enough for Constructed. Yeah, I wouldn't. I would not be surprised if this this does not this does not see Constructed play. It's a cool design though. Poet of Galaki, seven costs, triple Sapphire Threshold, unblockable. Two eight. When a Chaos Touch deals damage to an opposing champion, bury the top card of their deck. When a card enters an opposing crypt from a deck, put that card in your hand. So we mentioned that the other card with the Chaos touched earlier. Yeah. This is extremely powerful. He's riding on his chest, and he has snakes for, like, coming out of his back. So this guy is quite the poet. Huh. I don't think this is constructed playable, but it just feels like it's just a stone bomb in Limited. Yeah, again, like you mentioned earlier, the card that creates a replica, like, you have to be able to actually play these cards, right? So if they're not on the same shards as you, you're not actually drawing cards with it? Well, So when a card enters an opposing crypt from a deck, you put that card in your hand. So if you mill them, oh, okay. you all, those, shards. Okay. all those cards go in your hand, and you can draw the shards. So, like, you, know, you play this, you untap Lunacy them. Let's just draw five, right? That's fair. Okay. <laughs> That this that deck is going to show up somewhere. I don't think it's going to be good, but people are going to try it. Yep, definitely. I mean, if I've learned basically. anything from playing Magic for twenty years and being in like Magic retail for you know the last five or so, mill cards sell. Yep. <laughs> Prestigit. I how do you pronounce this? Don't even try it. We have a human mage up next. Prestigitator. <laughs> uh, three cost, saf single sapphire shard. It's a 3-2. When it enters play, create a random action with cost one that you meet the threshold requirements to play and put it into your hand. I think this card is gas. You think so? Yeah. So what are, I guess I would have to do uh, a search on Hex CCD browser for what are all the one cost sapphire cards basically. Well, that you have the threshold for. So, like, if you're Sapphire Ruby, it could also give you a one-cost Ruby. Yeah, that's fair. And it's only actions. So, like, Sapphire actions, you have um, you know, Arcane Zephyr, Arcane or Z Zephyr, Arcane Focus. Um, I don't even know if, what the other ones are. Like, yeah, again, like those are the two constructed playable ones that we're aware of. So, like, what are the other cards that we could get that might not be quite as good? Because this card doesn't have evasion or anything like that, so the body's not that great. Yeah. Although, when you open it up to Ruby, there are a lot of sweet Ruby cards. Uh, Ruby actions with cost one. I think that I definitely want to take a look at the list of cards that this can make, but my gut just tells me this card is gas. Like, I know that... If this card was in Hearthstone, that card would just be instantly playable in Hearthstone. And this just seems similar to a lot of Hearthstone cards. Okay. But I can't pronounce the name. Alright, here we have Refute, another counter spell. So, single, single Sapphire, quick action, empower, interrupt target card would cost three or less. So, three can interrupt three or less, six can interrupt six or less. And again, the important difference between this and Counter Magic is that this only has a single Sapphire Threshold, which means when you're splashing Sapphire into your deck that this is castable, when Counter Magic might not always be. Yeah, I feel like... I feel like this is definitely better than Suffocate was in Limited. 
And this, and is, you know what, honestly, and this is probably yeah. going to see play in draft. We, we, we talked about earlier, you know, if there's a quick deck with the uh, the six drop five five flight Kyoto, you want to play Suffocate, like maybe just playing uh, Refute as your fifth and sixth pieces of interrupts is better than playing a four cost Suffocate. Yeah. Now, my biggest qualm with cards like this or interrupts that are tied to the cost of the card is, you know, if you a, a lot of times. It. Yep. Yeah, like a lot of times. In those types of decks, you're going to bridge bridge the gap by bouncing things and then countering them when they come back down the next time. Um, time ripple, like if you time ripple a four drop or a three drop and they just play it for four, like you can't use refute to counter it, which is kind of awkward. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I definitely um, like rippled a Quash Ridge Tusker and then like played my succulent Cluckadon and been like, I want to fight the oh. Whoops. Yep. <laughs> All right, so we got Runeweb Cultivator, four costs, double Sapphire Threshold, Flight, Venom Allegiance. When it enters play, create four eggs for each opposing champion, put them into their deck. Uh, this card is not going to see playing constructed, but is. Nuts and limited, right? Uh, it's just a very great role player on limited. Like, I cannot wait to do spiders with the 443. <laughs> and over 10% of your deck is spiders? Go. <laughs> yeah. Although, to be honest, I brick on that a lot when I'm just like in dominating positions. I am the I'm the king of losing seventy percenters. I'll tell you that much. Have you, Have you ever won a game with the Brood Baron in constructed? Nope. I won a game with Brood Baron. Like he was just not drawing the tarantula eggs, and we hit two hundred and fifty spider eggs in his deck. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh wow. All right, so we got Rune Reb Recluse, uh, five costs, four two flight, uh, single sapphire threshold, uh, not playable constructed. I think this is a limited chaff. I, I don't really want to be playing this card. It's just going to trade down the majority of the time. Yep. At least the concept of it's terrifying, you know. Spiders will fly. Yeah. Oh, jeez. All right, two costs. Rune Reb, Rune Web Weaver, uh, single sapphire threshold. When you play a troop with flight, this gets flight this turn two one. Um, not playable. Yeah, I think that playing a troop with flight. So there are similar cards to this in Magic that will just trigger like when you play something, it'll jump one of your early drops, so you can just like keep pressuring damage into the mid game. But just like playing a troop with flight to give this flight, I think that's just way too restrictive to make it playable. Yeah, you'd have to be like really light on two drops to make that playable yeah. in your in your draft deck. All right, Shade Stalker, four costs. Double Sapphire, 2-3, unblockable. This is going to be a slam first pick in limited, but I don't think it's playable and constructed at all. Yep, I would agree with that. Solemn Crypt Guard, 6 cost, 6-6, six, six, defensive with shift for single Sapphire. Uh, this is not playable and constructed and barely playable and limited. Old card number 23. Gotta, gotta pick something, right? Yeah. Soothsaying, three cost, single sapphire, basic action, empower, draw two, then choose and discard one. Why can't this be quick? Yeah, be so that, so that's what I was going to say. If this was quick, I think it'd be playable. Like, draw four, discard two is real good. Even yeah, at, I even think at six. More than playable if it's quick. Like, I'd snap this off easily. Yeah, but because it's not quick, I don't think this is playable and constructed. However, this is going to be very good and limited. Especially if you got a face taker. All right, Star Touch Watcher, nope. single Sapphire, 04 with Empower. So if I Empower and double zero, that's just zero again. So this is a two two cost 04 or four cost 08. I think this is just straight trash. Yep. Um, I, I want to backpedal for one second on the Sooth saying that we just talked about. One thing that I am remembering is that if there's a reanimator strategy, that card could be reasonable and that constructed. Oh, 100%. This game, this game uh, a two, up until this point, has been kind of light on discard outlets that are reasonable to play, and this is super reasonable for that effect. Yeah. All right, Starcaller Ancient. Two costs, single Sapphire, 2-2. Two, two. When you draw a prophesized card, create a copy of it and put it into your hand. That's a pretty powerful effect. It's, it's a powerful effect, but, like, when you're finally going to get that payoff is is so varied 
this your grizzly bear has to live long enough your grizzly coyote however you want to put it i just i i don't see this card being playable yeah man i really like the prophecy mechanic but it just kind of falls short for me compared to the majority of the rest of them yeah there's just so many moving parts in it and like it it falls short of the you need your cards to be individually powerful as opposed to synergistic generally to see constructive play yeah so here we have an interesting one tale of destiny three cost double sapphire basic action prophecy the next unique troop in your deck gets when you play this take an additional turn after this one but it only hits unique troops yeah i i, I don't think think i would be i would be very surprised to see this see constructive play i agree i think this is real bad and limited too straight bulk time flux three costs single sapphire quick action revert target card put that card into its controller's hand I actually like this so one of the problems with so the permanence of effects and hex is sweet but it's kind of frustrating when you're just like time ripple or buccaneer something that has been buffed or has additional effects and then they just replay it again so like a Reese that surfaced, you're like, all right, well, I can bounce it, but then I'm just going to have to deal with it again when they play it next turn. This is just yep. like an actual answer to, to Reese being surfaced. Yeah, and, like, there, there's definitely been occasions where, like, I've seen uh, Winter Moon decks and other Sapphire decks playing, like, Snapback as Time Ripples 5 and 6, and I definitely think this is better than that. Yeah, I think this is, this is going to have potential constructed and just be very good and limited. Very good and limited. All right, so here we have Penguin Dino transmogrifade one cost single sapphire quick action revert and transform target troop into a random artifact constant or troop with cost minus one so the fact that it can hit artifacts and constants like the fact that it can turn it into an artifact or a constant um i think this card is might actually just be great it's like i mean this is better than Pongify, even. Like, it makes it... Oh, 100%. It straight downgrades it, too. It has one less cost. Yeah, so, it, like, it's never going to be the same thing that you're hitting. Uh, sometimes, like, it can just hit an artifact or a constant that's completely worthless. And it's a one-cost action. Quick yeah, action. Hit, like, one of the random constants that has an effect when it comes into play. Yeah. Or, or like, if you if you hit a one-drop with it, it just turns it into a zero-drop something. Yeah, that's fantastic. And this is, yeah, wow, that's really good. So you can, like, trade up the curve against an aggressive deck with this. Yeah, and it's a quick action, so you have, like, these cards that give you benefits for it. Like, you can, man. Yeah, you can, like, in the Winter Moon Mirror, you can, like, pass with only one resource up, and they, like, tap out for six to play their Wind Singer, and you're, like, five drop. Yeah, like, you get a five drop, and they'll, it could just be bad. Again, it, and, 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 five drop is the Wind Singer, right? Yeah, like, and it, and it has the chance to be something sweet, but, like, I feel like because it has artifact and constant tacked on, the odds are in your favor. Like, if it just made it into a random troop with cost minus one, then you're like, well, I mean, I, I'm not really excited. But because you could just turn a troop into something that can't do damage to you, then this could just literally be a one-cost removal spell. Yeah, I think that combined with the fact that it's really good against aggressive troops makes this card beyond constructive playable. Yeah. So now between this and Zygmunt's game, we have a lot of one-cost removal that seems to be pretty sweet. Like, man, and if you play, like, the the three costs, two, three, that reduces the cost of actions in your hand, and you just do this for free. Oh, that's gross. Yeah. All on turn three, too. Yeah. And it's Penguin, Di Penguin Dino. So, uh, three, three cost Tribunal Magistrate, Troop Venom Cleric, it's a 0 5. Your spiders have plus one attack for each Venom you control. When, a, when an opposing champion plays a non resource card, create two eggs and put them into that champion's deck. I think this is going to be just a straight bomb and limited. Um, and, like, if there's a, a mono sapphire spider deck, like, this has potential to be in that deck. Yeah, definitely. And, like, you know, your spiderlings are unblockable. So, like, even when just this is in play, like, two, four power worth of spiderlings is a lot more than two power. Yeah. Yeah, this card. I like this card a lot. Right, we have Vex Storm, Sweet Art, six costs, three sapphire, basic action. Each champion draws a card for each card they control, and then you put each card in play into their controller's deck. Huh. 
Huh. How is this really better than just dinglering someone? It's, it costs two less. But they're just like drawing a bunch of cards, right? So. Yeah, correct. So like you're you're technically getting like a you're, you're like getting a three three for zero or whatever because they're replacing themselves. But you're buying yourself a little bit of tempo at the same time. Yeah, and it's each champion, so it's not like you can have a board presence and then play it to get rid of their board presence and pressure them. Yeah. yeah I think this card yeah, is I would, I would be, Yeah, I would be kind of surprised if this is playable. Art, art is sweet. It has a lot of words. Vision Quest. Three, clock, th three cost, triple sapphire. So the cost is extremely restrictive. It's a constant. Basic. Put three cards from your hand into your deck. Add a meditation counter to this. At the start of your turn, draw a card for each meditation counter on this. I, I for one, will be excited to destroy this after my opponent has put three cards back into their deck. Right, so, and you can do it multiple times, right? So let's say on turn three, so you're seven, six, s seven, six, seven, six, five. So like you can play this on turn three on the play and then put three cards back in. If you're on the draw, you can just put your entire hand back in and then draw three cards a turn after that. Yeah, so the important thing that you, the way you have hmm. to think about this is is that this card has to sit on the table for three turns to break even for every time you've activated it. Yeah. So like that that's a long time and like the boards can develop very quickly in that time. Th that being said, um, this kind of effect again I mentioned earlier the card that prophesizes things that draw cards. This type of effect is very powerful card based strategies where you just need to be drawing more cards every turn because the cards in your hand aren't as valuable because they're tearing your hand up. Yeah. And it's a constant, so that might be relevant. This card is I'm gonna say it's weird and I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet. I'm gonna try to play this card. I don't know if it's going to be good. Wakuna Brave? Oh sorry, I was on Vision Quest still. <laughs> All right, so Brave, 5 cost, 2-5, single Sapphire, Socketable Miner. When it enters play or dies, the next troop in your deck gets all socketed powers of this. Again, I don't think these types of cards are going to be very playable and constructed. And because, this, because the stats are so mediocre, this I don't even want this in my limited deck. Yep. The final Sapphire card, Renlock's Apprentice. 3 cost, single Sapphire, threshold 1 3 when it enters play put a random action from the top four cards of your deck into your hand and then put the remaining cards in your deck so i cut this this reminds me of um like Agri like Agri bolas and like, i why doesn't it cost two i was gonna say i wish that it cost two and only looked at the top three yeah i don't think this is playable at, at three for one three sadly neither do i but the effect is pretty sweet yep yeah, so that's going to wrap up the Sapphire review. Uh, there are some pretty sweet cards in Sapphire, and I, man, as, we, as we're going through these reviews, I'm getting real excited for the set, especially for Draft. It looks like it's going to be really sweet, and I think that it's going to, to change the landscape of the constructed format. So thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us and watching the video. I hope you enjoyed uh, the other videos in this series, and make sure you stay tuned uh, for the remaining videos where we're going to go over the wild uh, shard and then we also have artifacts multi shard resources and uh, champions after that so I am Chris Van Meter here with Jeff Hoagland and hopefully you guys stick around and check out the next video